What's up guys, it's Tyler from House of Cards TCG bringing you another live duel. This is post Cyberstorm access using proxy cards. This is before the set even came out. We hosted a tournament trying to see, test the new decks. Again, the lines may not be optimized, decks may not be optimized at this point, but we just wanted to test and play with live cards rather than playing online. So I hope you enjoyed this type of content. Please make sure to subscribe to the channel, help us get to 3000 subs. It's been growing exponentially and we truly, truly appreciate everybody's support. So without further ado, let's dive into Shane's Super Heavy Samurai deck against Andrew's Pearly deck in a live post-Cyberstorm Access duel. House of Cards. TCG. Alright, diving on to our first match. We have Shane on the left. He's playing Super Heavy Samurai. You can find him on the channel, of course. Then we have Andrew on the right. He is playing Pearly. So let's see what we're able to do here. We're going to go ahead and see the pearly player going first. I'm going to go ahead and see him activating the what appears to be pretty possibly, but you're going to see him discard the volcanic shot, which is going to be great for him. He's going to go ahead and activate the pearly that he special summoned off of what I appears to that actually could be sleepy now that I look at it. So I could be sleepy that he activated, which is very interesting because I think isn't sleepy the one. No, sleepy just sleepy just special summons. So he's going to special summon pearly there. And the Volcanic Shot is actually really nice because then you get to banish it and then it gets to add an extra card to hand. So it's kind of how you get your discard fodder going. So he is going to go ahead and let's see what he decides to do here. Got to resolve the uh, Pearly, unless I missed that. He might have already done that. So let's see what he does here. He's going to go ahead and activate what appears to be a Happy, possibly. Maybe a Pretty. Could be a pretty, actually. So that's going to go ahead and bring out another pearly. He's going to go ahead and activate the effect of pearly. That's going to go ahead and mill. Maybe he did mill and I missed it and he whiffed. Uh, sorry if I missed that. Might have been looking at another screen. So we're going to go ahead and see the two pearlies come out. That's two level ones, which is really good. And you want to obviously get a level one as a material. But he can also use the effect of each pearly to attach a spell. And then they could go ahead into his ranks. So he is going to go ahead and grab the volcanic shot. Oh, I guess it just activates. It doesn't banish. So we are going to go ahead and see Pearly really taking control here. He's got all three volcanic shots in the graveyard. He's going to add one back to hand, discard another one by activating. He does ash that, which is really good. So it looks like he ashed what appeared to have been another pretty by chance. Um, we're going to see a talent draw too. And then he's going to go ahead and drop down what appears to be a delicious. Again, using that right zone, I can't really see. But that's going to go ahead and special summon out the Lily. And then Lily's going to go ahead and grab him the continuous spell, which is my friend Pearly. Or if he already has that, then he'll grab the trap. I do see a ghost ogre in his hand, but we're going to see a Valor on the Lily. So that's pretty good there. Can't complain. Although it does pose that maybe there's a potential that you go ahead and Valor the plump because then the plump can't go ahead and um, grab two. So there is a possibility of that, but then you looking at the plays, he does have three on there. I, I don't know. Maybe you saved the Valor for the Plump. It is possible. Again, this is all testing, though, prior to the set coming out. So obviously, we're still learning the lines. It's not optimized yet. For really, sometimes the first time actually seeing these decks and being able to play against them. So, But there is an argument to Valor the Plump, I would say. I know Plump attaching two is pretty good. So... Let's see what lines our pearly player decides to go here. He is going to go ahead and use all three. Let's see what he decides to do here. He decides to bring out... Is that a Reciting Starling? Uh, that's not Reciting Starling. That is Ensemble Robin. Two plus level ones. And that's just going to be a bounce. So maybe that Valor on that Lily was smart. Because now all he's got to do is play across the uh, Ensemble Robin. But he is going to go ahead and Ogre the Prodigy playing into Gamma. Uh, but I guess he does have a monster on the field, so but he does. But, but our samurai player does not, so he played into Gamma with that. Maybe there's a case to actually just um, ogre the Benkai, but he does. Shane does have the extender, which is an actual follow up normal summon. You can either normal summon the wagon or you can normal summon out the peacemaker. Those are great combos there. You're gonna see him grab the peacemaker now. Soul piercer, not peacemaker, soul piercer. Still trying to get these names down. Uh, we're gonna see him equip it to the wagon. And then we're going to go ahead and I would imagine the idea here is you equip it. So if he bounces the normal summon, which 
you can't because it's a uh, only mouse is special so i believe i believe robin's only special some monsters but when he links it off you get the effect of the soul piercer but let's go ahead to link it off for the scarecrow and the ensemble robin does say Target one special summon monsters, so you do have to bounce a special summon monster. This is a great time, obviously. There is a case that you could wait until he activates the effect and makes him discard a card in hand before you bounce it, because then it doesn't get any effect, and he has to go minus one. I do believe that our pearly player is probably doing pretty good if Shane doesn't have an extender, but there is a case to actually let him activate the Scarecrow, make him discard, then you can go ahead and bounce, and then he's going minus one in his hand, so... And I don't think that the Ensemble Robin has to... If your opponent special summons a monster, you can do that. So it's actually if he special summons. So he had to do it on the summon. I take that back. He did have to do it on the summon. But we are going to see the Soul Piercer grab a bike. Or he had bike in hand. Not sure how he grabbed it. I was looking at the cards. Making sure I read it right. So Ensemble Robin does have to... When it is special summon. So that is something there. Let's see what he goes with here. He's going to go ahead and add the Binkai. He's probably going to scale the Benkai. Benkai's effect will then activate to go ahead and special summon. Or to add, I mean. He does have another Prodigy in hand. That's interesting. He's going to be able to set up scales here. He is going to go ahead and special summon out. Pin summon out the Prodigy off the extra deck. And depending on what card he had in hand, he's going to go ahead and bounce that Prodigy. Prodigy would get bounced, so it would actually go back to hand. Yes, there you go, Shane. So, sitting with a Prodigy and appears to be in hand trap. And our pearly player still has another bounce. The Ensemble Robin sometimes is just too much. It's like Seal. I love Dragon Link. It's like playing Seal. Being able to bounce your opponent's monsters and get off the field is just sometimes so good. All right. Our pearly player is pretty much in control here. He could even make a Zeus line and wipe the scales. He is, I think, going to go that. So he's going to go Ensemble Robin into overlay for the Zeus. Looks like he's going to go downward into Zeus. Now, if a card would be destroyed by battle or card effect on the field, I believe that Zeus can then attach. Sometimes people forget that effect, so that would give him two wipes if that were to happen. So, if another card you control is destroyed by battle or opponent's card effect, you can attach one card from your hand to your deck. So, that is something to know. Maybe I would have set up some kind of back row so that if the back row gets popped, you get to attach another card to the Zeus. Just something to think about, but we're going to see Shane, unfortunately, have to pass to the Zeus, and then we're going to see a normal summon of Lily, and I think this is probably going to do it for Shane, unless he's got some kind of out. I do see an Ash Blossom, but he is going to go have to scoop. Sometimes, I mean, he just didn't have the extenders in hand, so it is unfortunate, but we are going to slide on into game two, and probably going to see Super Heavy Samurai pop off, because, I don't know, unless uh, Andrew is able to draw a couple hand traps, you know, maybe we'll see what happens. So let's go ahead and we're going to dive into game number two. And I believe our super heavy samurai player, Shane, is going to be going first. As always, please consider subscribing to the channel. Help us get to 3,000 subscri subscribers so we can continue putting out content like this. And let's see. We're going to see Shane go first. He's going to go ahead and start with a normal summon of the wagon. That is obviously not ideal. It is the least favorable normal summon that you want to see on the super heavy samurai side. So... We're going to see a wagon come down, activate its effect, puts it in defense, or you, whatever, however it does it, and then it gets to search. So I missed what we search here, but I imagine it's the Soul Piercer, because if he had that if he had that in his hand, he would have normally summoned it already. So he's going to equip it to the wagon. That's going to go ahead and link that off for the Scarecrow. Then we're going to get the Soul Piercer effect. Probably going to grab him the bike, or he's going for the Peacemaker. But he is actually going to go Prodigy here, so not fearing the Ogre whatsoever. Trying to get that extender. Prodigy's going to be able to scale. And then what it does is it's going to special summon itself and then it's going to scale the big Binkai from the deck. And then Binkai is going to go ahead and activate its effect and it's going to go ahead and search. And we see no ogre. I think I see all green cards on my Andrew's side, but I do see it, what I believe is a thrust in his hand. So we're going to see what happens here. He's going to go ahead and grab the Soul Gaia. Then we're going to go ahead and discard the scales off of the Scarecrow. That's going to bring back the Soul Piercer and then Scale, or actually going to bring back the Scale. Scale is then going to bring back the Soul Piercer. Now we're going to go ahead and synchro both of those off for an Excel. Soul Piercer will now get its effect. Soul Piercer will then search probably the bike this time now. So we do grab the bike. We're going to discard the bike. Uh, Shane went ahead and summoned it back. I do think that Excel is an on summon effect. Let me double check that though really quick here. Uh, that is going to be a misplay by Shane. You actually cannot do that. The Excel has to special summon the bike when it is synchro summoned. Uh, so this Baron is actually, I'm sure that there was probably another line that he could have done. Again, we're still testing. This is pre 
obviously pre the set coming out so we're still learning all the lines and different things but excel is when it's synchro summoned then you could target and there was not a bike in the graveyard so you actually cannot bring back a bike but that is going to go ahead and bring up baron andrew would probably never let him live that down that he cheated him so but obviously it was unintentional again still learning the lines, still learning out how to play this game so uh we're going to go ahead and see the soul piercer come back out we're going to go ahead and synchro those off or link maybe for a ballista let's see what he ends up going with here I do believe that is a ballista. I can't really read it, see it, but it does look like a ballista to me. Or maybe he's showing him something, but he's going ballista up in the extra monster zone. That's going to go ahead and trigger the soul piercer. And it's also going to grab the ballista, which is going to grab an ancient gear box. So they're obviously talking about something there, maybe some tech in the extra deck. So when we grab the ancient gear box, that's also going to trigger the ancient gear box to also search another card, which is probably going to be tunneler. So we're going to see him grab a bike off the soul piercer, and it is going to grab tunneler off the ancient gear box when it's searched out of the deck or graveyard. All right. So now we have the extension. We still have not pin summoned. We are going to go ahead and see a pin summon come down, which is tunneler, bike, and ancient gear box, and also the soul Gaia. This is when the super heavy samurai just gets out of control. Honestly, those scales were broken. Just crazy how you're going to print a level 1 scale. All they had to do to make that right was make it a level 4 scale. They did not have to make it a level 1 scale. Just make it a level 4 scale, you would have been just fine. That Bing, Bing Kai being a level 1 is crazy. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and see what our Super Heavy Samurai player goes. This is why you really want to side in Dark Roller against Super Heavy Samurai. You have to to be able to break the board. Maybe some Dark Roller evenly action. But we're going to go ahead and see an overlay here with the two level fours. Probably going into Merrymaker, into Sargus. Sargus is then going to go ahead and search out our Regulus, which is just another negate on the field. And then we're going to go ahead and see an Appaloosa come down using the Tunneler, Bike, and Ancient Gear Ballista. That's going to make a three mat Appaloosa. Then you go ahead and activate the Regulus targeting the Soul Piercer. Then you can Barone. It's actually going to pop the Soul Piercer, giving you another search. And then if you think that this is not enough, when you still have three cards in hand with two Omni Negates and Appaloosa, you go ahead and activate the Tunneler. That shuffles back five of your Earth Machine cards. And we're going to see all five of those go back. And you get to draw two more cards, which is usually going to draw you into some hand traps because you've thinned the deck out. We're in insane. Just insane. Tunneler, I'm sorry. You're a great card, but you're probably going to get banned for this reason. So you definitely want Drolls and Dark Rollers against this deck from what I found. Drolls and Dark Roller. That's what you want to see. All right. Good luck to our pearly player. Let's see what he ends up doing here. Uh, I think I see a Valor. Valor's already going to deal with whatever he brings out, whether it be a Lily. All right. We're going to go ahead and see what uh, appears to be a Happy, possibly. Take a look over here. It kind of looks like a happy memory. He ends up discarding what appears to be another happy. And that's going to go ahead and special out the pearly. He can activate the pearly effect. This is probably going to get met with a Valor. Or you can go ahead and Appaloosa negate that, basically. We're going to see a Talents. Talents, then Regulus is going to negate the Talents. I thought it was a Thrust, but I guess it was a Talents in hand. Actually, to be honest with you, he's only down to one more Omni Negate, plus Hand Traps, of course, but two Monster Negates. You deal with the Appaloosa. You, if you can get another monster out, you kind of overlay into the... I think it's the Nightingale. Then you can attack, make Zeus. But still, you got to deal with that Appaloosa. you got to get that Appaloosa off the board. All right, our Jinzo on the right over here is going to go ahead and bring out Normal Summon out the Lily. Now, this is a good opportunity to Valor that, I was going to say. And then our pearly player is just going to scoop because Super Heavy Samurai still had Droll, Ogre, and Ash still in his hand. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. Tunneler, Draw. You see that board? Two Omni Negates, a three mat Appaloosa, plus Ogre, Ash, Droll, and Valor all in his hand. You just can't beat it. It's insane. So you definitely want to be able to. You definitely have. Even if you had Dark Roller evenly, you still can't play because he's going to hand trap you to death. So. That's pretty good there. Pretty good. So that is going to do it for our pearly player for game two. Now we're going to go into game three, which appears to be our pearly player going first. So let's go ahead and dive into game number three. All right, heading into game number three. Let's see what happens here. Um, uh, pearly can be scary going first, though. So especially post-siding. 
you know, you take the ogres out. I found that ogre may not be good, but I did find a good spot to actually ogre the pearly player, which is if they go for plump, if you can stop them from being able to bring out Noir on their turn, you go ahead and plump on the draw effect, and then you can actually deal with it. So we're going to go ahead and see. Hey, is that a retaliating C come down? Uh, that might be a retaliating C coming down from Shane. So that's going to go ahead and deal with the pearly player. Let's Let's just go ahead and review retaliating c real quick so retaliating c says during either player's turn when your opponent activates a spell card that includes the effect that special summons a monster you can special come in this card from your hand if summoned this way while this card is face up on the field any card since the graveyard is banished instead that is an insane card to just go ahead and deal with this pearly player all his spells going to be going sent straight to the great or to the banished pile that is really good because now you can't reattach them we're going to go ahead and see a whiff off of the pearly and this might be it for our pearly this might be the answer this is actually kind of crazy. Retaliating C coming in clutch against Pearly. Huge tech. Of course, we do see a thrust in his hand. You could actually thrust. <clears throat> Hear me out. He's got thrust in his hand. You go thrust, search talents. Talents can then go ahead and take unless he activated that card in draw phase which could be he could have activated the pearly card in draw phase and then that's going to prevent him from being able to go thrust talents take and then be able to do something with that card like linking it off or something like that but i would assume if you're a pearly player you need to be aware of retaliating c because this card seems to be doing very well against you in your deck so let's go ahead and see what happens next we're going to go ahead and see a what appears to be a happy i think come down and then happy is going to go ahead and target what appears to be on the field as a <clears throat> plump is that plump on the field i can't tell but all right we're gonna go ahead and see a summon of the lily so happy went ahead and targeted can't be destroyed by card effects which appears to be a plump but i can't really tell there again i was too concerned about the retaliating c coming down and lily lily being able to activate go ahead and search he is re reading retaliating c but the <clears throat> obviously the Lily being able to go ahead and search. You're going to go ahead and ash that. Oh, that's so good. So answers right here. Being able to bring out Retaliating C and still activate a card like Ash Blossom, which can be sent to the graveyard. So let me just read any card sent to the graveyard is banished instead. Yes. you. So I wonder if you <clears throat> probably can't even activate Veil or anything like that under the Retaliating C. So that's good for the Super Heavy Samurai player to have that up already. And then also you have bike, so you can just bike and then make a excel, excel into a baron. It's a free baron for them. Really good card there. <clears throat> All right, we're going to see the pearly player going to have to pass here. All right, so I think that <clears throat> we're deciding what we're going to do here. Uh, in standby phase, maybe we're activating the effect to draw. I can't tell what's attached to that plump, but... This is a great... So he does have that ogre in hand. This is what I was talking about. If he activates the plump effect to draw in the standby phase, you can go ahead and ogre and deal with it. Or you can even gamma it and then have that plus. <clears throat> the only thing you have to walk it out for is if you have the trap. He obviously doesn't, but if he has the trap, you can flip it. And then that avoids the ogre. <clears throat> so I think that our Super Heavy Samurai player unfortunately opened all hand traps here. I see Droll, Ash, and Ogre in his hand. So he is just going to swing into the Lily with the Retaliating C leaving the retaliating C on the field. So it appears that our super heavy Samurai player has brick giving our pearly player an actual opportunity to come back here, but we are going to see a Kaiju come down dealing with the plump. That's a good one. Get that deal with the board. He's on top deck. He is going to go ahead and bring, find himself a pearly. He's going to normal summon the pearly. That's going to go ahead and mill three. And he's going to go ahead and grab himself. I believe that's a sleepy. So unfortunately under retaliating C though, it's just going to get banished, but he could go ahead and special summon out but he doesn't have a card to discard, so he actually can't do anything with that card because he needs to be able to discard to activate the Sleepy. And so he's going to go ahead and swing with the Kaiju, swing with the Pearly. And all, unfortunately, if our Super Heavy Samurai player can top deck any Super Heavy Samurai, it is going to be game. Let's see what he ends up top decking here. It is going to be a pass. We're going to see a draw, but now our Super Heavy Samurai player, or our Pearly player, does have a discard for that Sleepy. Just read Sleepy. You can discard it if you do special summon. So it's just a uh, the next battle or effect damage you take becomes zero. So that's a good one. So here he could go into uh, rank one, possibly. Maybe one of his... Uh, if I were him, I'd probably just 
Ensemble Robin right now because Ensemble Robin deals, you know that your opponent's bricking, right? You know that he has hand traps. Don't try to overextend. I don't know why Shane didn't ash this. Oh, he's got Ogre and Ash here. I don't, He doesn't have Ash. He has Ogre, Valor, and Droll with a Gamma. Gamma on the Lily. You didn't even have to do that. All you had to do was just go ahead. Don't get greedy. Overlay for the Ensemble Robin. Sit on the Robin Kaiju. You could probably have won on that. So I do think our pearly player got greedy there. You knew your opponent had hand traps. You could have completely prevented that. And you could have sat on an Ensemble Robin dealing with anything that he top decks. Because if Shane top decks a super heavy samurai, as soon as he links it off or whatever, you could just deal with it. So... I don't know if I agree with that play. You just have to basically buy one turn with that Kaiju up there, and you're probably going to win. But let's see what Shane goes ahead and draws here. If it is a Samurai, it might be game. Because you know our pearly player doesn't have anything in hand. And it's going to pass again, giving our pearly player a second opportunity to just not overextend here is the play you bring out the drill this was the play i was talking about the turn prior that he should have done sit on the robin with the kaiju swing swing this is it this is exactly what i was talking about doing so this is perfect this is going to be you don't even have to go zeus here you don't even have to go zeus but i mean zeus is obviously going to be really good and that's going to be it we're going to see our pearly player win with the regulus ash ochre baylor droll in hand that's insane pearly player taking it down that was good for him. I was happy to see that one. So we are going to see Pearly beat our Super Heavy Samurai player. And this has been Tyler with House Cards TCG signing out.